Let's talk about this. So this is courtesy of Vice magazine. Allegedly, a few weeks ago, or maybe a couple of weeks ago, one week ago, Elon Musk got rejected from Bergheim. How amazing is that, right? As a story, to put out there on social media, as something to stir some debate and some contrition. Now, from what I saw, kind of browsing the Berlin subreddit and the Bergheim subreddit, which I frequent quite often, he actually was there. Now, there are conflicting reports as to whether or not he actually got rejected in the queue. We're not really too sure whether or not he actually turned around. We don't know. Um, but he actually was there physically. People actually saw him. And people, the reason why he was there, I know he was there physically because people said they saw him in Sisyphos. They saw him in Kick. No, is it Kick Cat? I think it's Kick Cat or somebody else. Um, so he actually was in a couple of places. I think someone even said that he might have been at Matrix Bar, but obviously not. And obviously the joke of Matrix Bar is that it's, it's terrible. It's like one of the worst kind of, you know, commercial sort of like horriblest clubs you can go to in Bergen. It's, it's equivalent to like, this I have to say, it's equivalent to like going to, coming to London and the first place, first place you want to go to is Egg or something like, why would you do that to yourself, do you know what I mean? Or Old Blue Last, like, you know, come on, go to somewhere much nicer than that. So I have a bit of a opposing opinion on this. I personally think it's a bit of a piss take to reject him from Bergen and kind of use it as some sort of like ha ha he he rejected multi-million multi-billion multi-billionaire dude i think it's a bit lame personally for me especially when you consider that he just built there's a gigafactory in berlin right so they're going to be building flipping teslas there he's brought back manufacturing yes he's done some questionable things when it comes to the local environment i know i know and again i'm not too educated on the all the specifics of it because i don't live out there but i still think if somebody is you know um if somebody is basically providing employment opportunities in that city for people and you know is basically restarting manufacturing to some extent especially car manufacturing in that country then i think you should be given a little bit of leeway and a little bit of blight when it comes to getting into exclusive clubs like the burger now again does it add to the allure of the club does it make it far more cooler that somebody as rich and powerful as elon couldn't get in of course it does does it make it does it kind of add to the mystique of the club? Does it actually make people want to go to it more? Of course. The same way how, unfortunately, if you hear somebody, I think um, you hear Joey Diaz say a lot, whenever a really famous person dies from a drug overdose, you always say, oh, give me that weed that flipping killed Michael Jackson or whatever it may be, right? But that's the truth of it. The actual truth of it in some places in the world, when a famous person passes away from a particular drug, some of the local dealers will then start marketing the drug that they have as this weed is X weed. Like this weed is whatever weed. Or this Coke is this from this person, right? That, that'll be how they start to market it because they feel like there's going to be a certain group of people out there who are going to want to swim in the dark waters, who are going to want to come as close as they can to God as possible and have a sip of that or well, lean weed, whatever it may be that got that person, that made a person OD. So that is the case to some, to some extent. But I don't know. I think it's a bit lame. I think they should just let him in. And it would have, imagine how cool of a story that would have been for you to be in Ber Berkheim one random weekend and then to be, at, you know, dancing, having a good time and then here at the bar and then suddenly this tall, weird sounding South African American dude is next to you. You're like, hold on, is that fucking Elon Musk? <laughs> or you're in a dark room somewhere and he's getting his schlong slobbed on. And you're like, oh, smokes, that's Elon Musk. Do you know what I mean? That, that would have been a far more interesting story, but... I guess just seeing him in a queue while you're standing there must be super cool as well in some extent. But anyway, the article says as follows. How to get into the Berghain is an omnipresent question for first timers visiting the legendary Berlin club. During the ranks of this sweaty, nervous newcomers, this week was a very unlikely figure. Elon Musk, the richest man in the world. But did the Tesla founder and the, fa and the father of Graham's children get rejected at the door or did he actually refuse to enter the techno club as he came on social media? That I feel like is the height of being a lame. And that's what I said earlier before about Elon Musk not being cool. It's a very weird predicament to be in like i said god doesn't give you everything god gives you something so he's a genius an absolute bona fide genius co-founded paypal founder of tesla spacex trying to make life multi-planetary building autonomous robots like you know self-driving cars crazy shit but the guy is a dork dork of the dork the dork 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 can hardly you know can hardly speak Maybe it's to do with his autism or whatever it may be. Is it autism? I think it's got whatever it is. He's probably got that and the stutter on top of it, right? Um, is he blessed in languages? I don't know. Can he sing? No. Can he dance? No. Like, pretty lame, right? And all the, what, what is it? Like, he's into, like, crypto jokes and NFT stuff and Dogecoin. It's stuff like mm, corny, dorky shit. But he's a super genius. 
And I think part of the way of being a dorky person is to say stuff like that. Like, it's far more admirable just to go there and say you didn't get in than to come back and lie. It just doesn't make sense. It's like the person that lies about hooking up with somebody. Oh, yeah, I fucked her. I kissed her. I did this. No, you didn't. I could just ask her. I don't want to. I don't need to because that's weird as well. Going and asking people for confirmation. Like, did he stick his pee-pee in you? That's weird. But still, it's like, that's a, it's the same type of person that would lie about kissing somebody. It's the same person that would lie about not getting into a club or I rejected the club or I turned her down, actually. because It's like, come on, grow up. Um, anyway, this is the following. Musk, who just bought 9.2% stake of Twitter, has clearly been enjoying himself in the German capital. According to Breathlessly, Breathlessly, why is, what kind of phrase is that? Breathlessly reported accounts that, um, in the Times and other publications, he has dived into two of Berlin's famed fetish electronic music scene. On his, uh, uh, oh, famed, not two. Um, on his visit to European city, including a visit to Kit Kat Club, better known as the city's most notorious techno sex club, the Labyrinth Warehouse Club City Foss, where he was spotted in a Zorro mask. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's, that's, that's a good thing to do, going in a mask. The funny thing about Kit Kat, which I why has never been, is that you have to wear like, basically sex wear right you've got to go in bondage and leather and pvc i just can't bother to get dressed up in that way shape or form i'll get dressed up in like a fashion way but i'm not gonna go and dress up in like fishnets and a choker and whatnot to go and party somewhere i'm not really that bothered and also i'm not that horny so it's not something that i really need to bother going to and when i saw that picture of a swimming pool in there like i was like it just imagine what that swimming pool must be like on a peak Saturday night, but it also looks pretty amazing on the inside. There's a video actually on YouTube, check it out of Kit Kat Club, where somebody does a tour of the whole club on the inside and the decor and the interior. That's part of the reason why Berlin has have some of the best clubbing spaces. Like there are sort of these weird, interesting spaces that haven't been updated or had any sort of lick of paint in years. And it just looks like it's crumbling, it looks like a sweat and gonorrhea and chlamydia hanging off the walls, but it looks like it'd be fun. Um, so that's an interesting place for him to go to. So I'm assuming he had to dress up to go in there or maybe he got let in. Who knows? Um, so this could, no, Kick Out might be more of an easy one because you can buy tickets to go there. So maybe he was a little bit okay there. And City Foss is usually a place that everyone can get into and it's a legendary space because it's usually open like 24 hours in a day and whatnot. Um, and it's got an amazing outside beer. It's got amazing like little huts. I remember there's a hut in there where there's loads of like smoke and shit you can kind of go into. Like, it's a cool little spot. Really, really cool. Um, it continues anyway. Did the, did the But the real question is, did the Berlin, uh, sorry, did the Berliner go into Bergheim? Here's, a, here's what they said. Um, they wrote peace on the wall at Bergheim. Must tweeted at 3.51 a.m. on Sunday morning, which is peak Bergheim time. I refuse to enter. Around three hours later, he elaborated on the incident saying, peace, peace. I hate the word. I don't know what that means. Maybe that was just high. Someone said he was blitz of coke, allegedly. He was just like clearly high in the queue. So that might have not helped his cause. As most of you guys know, standing in the queue at Bergheim, you have to kind of just remain stoic and quiet. As hell. It's probably, it legitimately might be the most quiet queue you will ever see in your life. The most orderly queue. Maybe next to like the queue outside of an ATM. Right? No one's really partying or chatting away or dancing or being belligerent in an ATM queue unless it's a queue outside a very popular nightclub or fast food establishment or like high street. Most of ATMs are just like people just standing there trying to check their shoulders and make sure no one's going to steal their 20 pound they're trying to pull out. Um, but, you, you know, Berlin, Bergen queue is quiet like a mouse. It's flipping. It's like a church. Like It's literally like you're queuing up to go to church. Like, so maybe if you're like smashed out of your mind and you're clearly sniffing and drunk and your nose is leaking and you're twitchy as hell people are like no you can't come in when you're, you're already steaming you're going to be too much bother for everybody in there maybe who knows um da -da -da. Well, he says um he continues on uh he said um he, he said here we're quoting the line from roman juliet he said those who don't care about peace myself aspiration included do not hear it and those who don't care about peace well i don't know Based on these tweets, Musk at least show at Musk, Musk at least saw the outside of Bergheim. The peace sign is a relatively new addition that currently stretches across the outside of the club in stark black and white lettering. You can see it in its Instagram post from French DJ Miss Kitten, who played the upstairs space of Panorama over the weekend. So clearly he must have been there to see it, or he just saw the picture because it's been everywhere. It's been shared all over social when it first opened. And obviously you can see it behind Miss Kitten and um what's his name? The guy she did the album with. Oh, I forgot. Doesn't matter anyway. Um yeah, I just said, yeah, in her caption, until until ultimate live experience, period, speechless, don't get techno temple. 
Uh, it continues the peace sign in the first thing you see and you walk up to it. The letters of the sign are almost as tall as the top floor windows. But did the sign send Musk into a rage that made him leave the queue? Or was he as, to, as multiple social media posts and pioneer said, speculate simply turned away the entrance? Bergan declined to comment on the story, the club has strict policy of not discussing anything that happens in there, which given the thing, kind of things happening in the dark room is kind of makes sense. So where does it leave our billionaire playboy? Play, play, playful magazine founder, Philip Sanderson Bayer, is that you say, or Bayer, was there on the night, but didn't spot Musk. He says, it's always hard to predict who's going to come in and not. But it tells advice. It depends on the door crew's gut feeling of you. But our advice for Elon is not to come together with a big group and then don't care too much about the rumors of strict dress code. Just be yourself, Elon, and it'll be up to the guys and girls of the door to decide on your future, which is a fairly accurate sort of a review. It's always annoying when you see those kind of reviews or YouTube videos where people are like going out and buying the most outlandish clothes to go and get in there. It's just like, that's lame. Why would you buy something that you wouldn't ever wear just to get into a space that you don't know nothing about? If you want to go into a space that you don't know nothing about, you should go in there as comfortably as you can in the clothes that best represent you. Of course, maybe show out a little bit, maybe dress to impress, but don't actually go and have a completely different new style that you would never wear just to get in somewhere. I think that's lame. Really, really cool. Really, really lame. So I like that advice. Anyway, the Bayer told Vice that there is nothing special about the number of people who get turned away that night. A cover on Reddit who waited around an hour and 45 minutes to get in says the rejection rate was quite high. And said if, if Musk did really attempt to get into the club around the time of the tweet, he would have been going to the worst possible time for a non-regular. Now, I don't really think that's true. I usually try and get there between the hours of like 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. on the Sunday morning anyway. That's usually my time to go. Um, the other times that I've been, I've also been that person that's been in, in there within the first hundred people just before it opened, you know, queue around 10 p.m., 9 p.m. and you can get in there when the doors are actually open. Um, but usually Sunday morning is always the best time to go. You avoid all the big queues and by that time it's already heaving in there. Anyway, it continues a crash course for the Burger Nightlife. We'll start with a list of peak hours, Rice Reporter noted in a piece of 24 hours in Burger. Da, da, da. Musk also however, had to wait for the not for the not inconsiderable amount of time as you can typically wait for hours in Burger and queue at peak times. That's not to be sneezed at given historic weather data shows the temperatures plunged to minus three degrees in Berlin that night. Does the man worth 273 billion like to wait in the cold? I mean, does anybody da, da, da. on Reddit, however, a user from the R Berlin forum named whatever his name is said that Musk actually made it to the front of the queue only to get turned away. So he did get rejected as saying. So maybe that might explain why he did that corny peace peace tweet without saying anything. Today they got rejected from Burger and Door. They, sorry, today he got rejected from Burger and Door. They posted on Sunday. When asked to confirm by another user, they replied, "I saw it." They told Vice. They told Vice over Reddit DMs that they saw Musk rejected at the home at none, none other than Sven Martka. Oh shit, Sven the big dog turned him away. Uh, Burger and imposing heavily tattooed head bouncer. That might explain it because Sven's very politically minded from interviews that i've seen read and heard of him he's very engaged um he's very aware of current cultural topics and stuff so he might be somebody that might have a an actual defined clear opinion on elon musk and his antics and he might think nah fuck him do you know I mean and obviously he's the head dog guy over there he, i don't think he works there permanently more from what i remember he's trying to he's trying to basically hand it over to the other guys and girls that do the door and he's pursuing his photography or other things i'm pretty sure but he does come in obviously from special times here and there he'd probably be there for the easter weekend i'm assuming as well but yeah if he had rejected him then that's probably that probably did happen i would assume must recently built one of the gigafactories here in berlin and behaved extremely arrogant and ignorant when it came to the needs of the environment nature and people of the city said um casper lutina and arrogance and ignorance are both attributes real Berliners can't stand, including Sven. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. I still think there is a part of me that thinks if you're providing people with jobs, legitimate jobs, especially post pandemic, and you're bringing back manufacturing, you deserve some sort of leeway, some benefit of the doubt. Yeah, you might, you know, disrupt the local environment and displace certain people and let off unnecessary fumes and the batteries might not be the most environmentally safest. Yeah, who knows? Who cares? Let go bygones be bygones, but you maybe should have the ability to go into some clubs. Now, the, the best thing about Berlin, though, even if you don't get into Berghain, one of the best things about it, to end this topic, I can't bother to talk about anymore. The best thing about it is that there's, you know, you could throw a stone from outside of Berghain and land at another club. So it's not as if, like, if you don't get in there, you can't get anywhere. It's not like here in London where if you can't get into Fold or Fabric at 4 a.m. in the morning, you might as well just go home because there's nowhere else open. But at least there, there is, like... um there is the ability to kind of go to anywhere else and stay out until like early, early hours of the morning. So that kind of helps with the whole rejection thing. So you can maybe not feel like it's personal, even though it is. 
people say it's not personal but it definitely is when you don't get in so that can maybe help with things going forward but yeah big up him he tried he tried he tried it obviously didn't work and now we're in this position that we're in now at the moment in it um 